Hello my friends, welcome to this new episode on Docker. Today we build this. In one of the next episodes I will show you how to build a satellite receiver system and how to run a whole home automation system on Docker. First things first, let's look at the video surveillance system with Shinobi. So let's see how we can deploy this container with uh, Portainer. So first we click on add container and uh, we give it a name, let's call it Shinobi. And we can in fact just pull the image from the Docker registry here from Portainer by just specifying the image name and the image name for the one we're using in this episode is shinobi cctv slash shinobi. By default it will go to the uh, colon latest tag. Now let's uh, publish on a random port we will see what that does and uh, just click on deploy the port hanger for the time being. Now we get an error message and that is because I switched off the always pull the image switch so as I don't have the image available yet, I need to do that again. In the command line, what we are doing is, let me just check if uh, we have the image pulled. I cut this out of the video. Here it is, it's 1.65 gigabytes in size. And uh, what you would have done from the command line to actually pull the image from the Docker registry is just docker pull shinobi cctv slash shinobi. Cool, now the container is deployed and if we check the logs of the container from Portainer, we can see that uh, Shinobi is ready. If you look at the last line in the logs, if uh, you try to connect to it and uh, it, it doesn't work, please check the logs, maybe it's not ready yet. Now we have a randomly published port which is uh, 32768 in my case and um, if we go to that link, basically it, it's asking us to log in but um, we don't have a login yet, we just need to create that. And if you look into the Shinobi documentation, you need to log in with an admin login and the login is admin at shinobi.video. And there is a default password for that login, which is admin, all in minus. Good, so we are logged in into the super user um, application. And here we can just click on add user and uh, create a user. So let me just uh, call that user one mark 50 at shinobi.local. And I'll give it a top secret password, of course. You need to type in the password once more. You can define additional parameters here, such as maximum storage amount for videos, the number of days you want to keep the videos, the number of days you want to keep events, etc. Let's just keep those blank for the time being. I just uh, copied the username so I don't have to type it in on the login again. Now the next step, you can see the user has been created, the account has been created. So let's just exit this super user interface and remove the super from the URL and go to the standard Shinobi interface where it's asking us to log in and I'll just paste the username in here and uh, type my top secret password here. Great. So here we are, Shinobi's up and running, and um, we can see the Shinobi user interface. So the first thing we really want to do is add some cameras or monitors like it's called in Shinobi. So I click on my username, then on add monitors, I click on add new, and here I can specify a couple of parameters such as do I want this monitor to be watch only or do I want it to record. For the time being I set it to watch only, I give it a name such as my cam, and there's a couple of other parameters I can put in further down the screen you need to type in a URL to your camera. And now this is uh, typically the tricky part. So how am I gonna find out which URL my camera has? And the great thing with Shinobi is if you click on the camera URL list, they have a, a website with a lot of camera vendors and um, the URLs you need to use, like the predefined passwords and everything. So for my camera, this is an Anke camera. Here is the URL, so I just type in RTSP because I know it's using RTSP. Let me just type that in. And then the, the IP address or rather the network name of my camera and then the URL which I copied from the Shinobi website. Just save that. And now this can take a couple of minutes until the, the screen shows up so I shortened this on the video. It might take up to a minute. Here it is, here is the camera and uh, we can see we have the first monitor edit and so what you can do from here you can watch it full screen 
so you, here you can see the disorder in front of my house. <laughs> um, I can do a couple of other things, such as uh, take an ad hoc snapshot and just save the file as a picture, for example. You can check the logs or reconnect the stream if it's lost. You can also go into the calendar and see if there are any recordings. So in, before I can watch any recordings, of course, I need to record something. So let me just uh, set that monitor to recording and then we'll skip a minute and we'll see how we can find those recordings. So here we go. We have uh, switched it to recording. It takes a while. And um, I just clicked on the power viewer icon on top of uh, the Shinobi screen. And as you can see, I have uh, two recordings here. That comes in really, really handy. If you have multiple recordings for multiple cameras, you can just go to the power view and you can view all the cameras one below the other. And there's a couple of options you can do from that screen, such as go to the previous video, go to the next video, etc. So now let's see what other settings we have available in Shinobi. Shinobi can actually do um, two-factor authentication. It can uh, define additional user parameters such as the maximum storage amount, the days to keep. You can group screens in, in, in monitor groups and can give them names. You can define upload locations, for example, S3 or Amazon S3, for example, if you wanted to automatically push your recordings to the cloud. The use case is if uh, burglars come to your house and they, they take the storage away, at least you still have the recording in the cloud so that you can um, uh, transfer it to the police. SSH, SFTP is another option here, which comes in really, really handy if you have cloud storage for Linux. So you can use that and Shinobi would then automatically transfer the recordings to, um, to the cloud storage. It can also integrate with LDAP. So if you had users in, in LDAP, and there's a couple of additional preferences which basically give you the possibility to change the, the appearance of uh, the interface and uh, what it looks like, etc. Let's close this for the time being. Another cool thing is that you can set schedules, meaning you can actually set the monitor to record at given times or given days. If, for example, you had um, a camera that doesn't have night view, you obviously there is no point in having it set to, to record on night. Now if you want to check for the videos uh, daily from one camera, you can do so by clicking on the calendar icon and from here you can do a preview or you can watch the video, you can download it, you can also delete old videos if you wanted to. Now it's just a short preview and let me just click on view and again from here of course you can go to full screen if you wanted to. Now let's see what that looks like in uh, Portainer and uh, there is one thing to keep in mind and that is that we don't have any volumes defined yet in the sense that um, the, the, the video files would be stored in some volume which Docker had automatically defined and that actually raises a couple of issues because if we redeployed the container the recordings would be gone and that's definitely not what we want. So let's have a look at how Docker actually manages volume. So if I would just create a container by doing docker create dash dash name container one and then obviously an image name, what it would do, it would of course deploy the container and the container would write to a disk storage somewhere, let's call it container dir. And if I remove that container by doing docker rm container one, docker would of course scrap the container, but the problem is that the volume with the stored data as it's managed inside Docker would also go away. And that is uh, not what we want for the videos because we want to keep them regardless of whether we redeploy the container. So if I just create a, a local directory, call it my dear, and now I create another container and I give it the dash V option, meaning I am actually mapping the my dear subdirectory to the container dear directory in Docker, what Docker would do it would bind the container dir to my local my dir and when the container writes into that directory it writes actually into my local directory. When I remove the container, 
Docker would again scrap the container, but the data in my dear remains. Now, if I create another container, let's call it container three and give it the same dash V parameters, again, binding the my dear to the container there in the Docker environment, it would create the container called container three. And that again would write into container there, which is again bound to the local my dear. What we have done here is actually we have made the data persistent. That means it can be reused by any new container which you create with the same volume bindings. So I found that um, Portainer is a quite great tool to manage containers, but not so great for deploying containers. So what I did, I wrote some scripts for you so you don't have to type in all the dash V parameters. I put them on GitHub and the links to GitHub are in, in, in the descriptions. So if you just go to, to my 1Mark50 GitHub and you type on episode 5, you can then download the scripts in a zip file. And um, let me just save them and uh, then open them so we can have a look at them. Here we go, here's the unzipped directory. Now I have created a, a, a batch file for Windows and one for Linux. And um, what we can do with these files, let me just actually um, copy them to the desktop and then, and then open them. Now if you're looking for a great editor for Windows, I would suggest using Notepad++ if you're looking for a, a great editor. On the Windows side, I can uh, strongly recommend Sublime Text. On Mac, that would be TextMate, which I've been using a lot. Let me just open those in Notepad++ and let's just quickly walk through the script. So, th the first thing we do, we actually, in, in line 18, 19 and 20, we set a couple of parameters and you can adapt these parameters to your needs. So, we give it a container name, we give it the image name and the local port we want it to run on. We also set the subdirectories. Now be aware that there is an um, unexpected functionality with MariaDB, that is the database Shinobi uses under Windows. So we can't really give it a subdirectory. What we can do is we can give it a named volume. And so here you can see the dash V bindings. The caret at the end of the line actually means that, I'm, that there is more to come in the next line. Under Linux that will be a backslash. So all the parameters are passed on to, to the script. So as I just said, we can't map the MySQL location or the MariaDB location under Windows. There is a well-documented bug actually. I'll put the, the link in the description. And the Linux is pretty much the same. Now here we can freely define where the database should reside. I will uh, create the directories if they don't exist. and. The script does a bit more, it actually checks if the container is already there. If it is not there, it will create it. And um, we do need to give a couple more volumes here, such as the local time and the time zone, because if you don't do that, it may be that your Docker container defaults to the UTC time zone and you definitely don't want that to happen. You want your videos to be timestamped with the correct uh, local time. So. Again, if you want to deploy the container using the script, just uh, use the script I provide on GitHub. Let me just do that. Let me scrap the container and then let me redeploy it using the script. So you just open the command line and you start the CMD file. I put it on the USB stick on E. So just call start shinobi.cmd and then it does everything for you. It creates the subdirectories. It creates the container and um, so here we go, let's check the logs of the container in the Docker desktop dashboard. And if we go into inspect and just see where, what the mounts are, you can see here that the directories inside the Docker container have been successfully mapped to, or rather bound to my local subdirectories. Let's just have, let's just have a look at Portainer and um, actually go into the, the Shinobi container and inspect it from there. Oh, sorry, let's go into the volumes actually and um, see where that database volume is. Here it is. So you can see in the volume list there is a named volume under Windows. Again, you don't need to do that under Linux. 
and I called it uh, database and we can see that it is mounted by the Shinobi container. So we can see that Shinobi is ready and if we redeploy, if you refresh that, uh, then the usernames and everything we enter in the videos, they will remain persistent and you can reuse it on and on again. That concludes today's episode on Docker with building a video surveillance system with Shinobi. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. By the way, before I forget it, I realized I had 10 subscribers. So that's great. Now let's hit the 100, right? Thank you very much, my friends, for subscribing. That really means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Hope you liked it. Please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye for now.